Now for Pizarro, our guest, she's a filmmaker. Active Dishonor is her new work. Uh, it'll be showing at Van City Theater, screening at Van City Theater. That's tonight at 7 p.m. In the meantime, let's talk about how you made the film. Getting to Afghanistan, the dust, the, you're the boss, right? I you was. You directed it and acted in it? Yes. But the directing part was um, much more fun for me because I had a crew of mix from Canada and some from Tajikistan and the rest from Afghanistan. And at the end of the day, when all those Afghan guys were calling me the boss. I see. <laughs> <laughs> Just revenge, right? It's not revenge. It was a nice thing for exactly. them as well to get used to that mm. idea that a woman could be out there doing something different than what they're used to seeing yes. her do. How did you cast it? Oh, it took a long time just casting, finding the characters. You see, I used real, real life characters. I didn't use professional actors. Um, none of the people from Afghanistan had actually been professional actors before. Uh, there are a couple of them that have worked, been in other films, uh, but just randomly, and they're not professional in a way that they have gone to film a school or a professional actor. Mm. So that was challenging in itself. Yes, yeah, so and no then, Meryl Streep's. Not really, To no, choose from, no. No, no. So I had to really do it, um, use a different method of casting based on their stories and their characters and what I could work with. Um, you know, through their emotions and range of emotions. Mm -hmm. um, so that in itself was interesting, but also challenging. I had uh, two professional actors from Canada, um, so they were professional, and then working with the mix of trying to have sort of what I call professional, semi-professional, and non-professional, to bring all of that, kind of equalizing that, the sure. roles. Um, was was quite an interesting Yes, and uh, some process. of the movie is subtitled and some is in English, yes. I'm assuming. Yes. So uh, let's take a look at a clip. Uh, this is you talking to your colleagues. Is this real life or this is in the film? This is in this the is film. This is in the film. This you is in the film. Okay, you talking to your colleagues on the film crew to discuss Mina's, uh, who is the young girl. The young Afghan girl who wants a burqa for the night of her wedding, she says and uh, she is engaged to her neighbor's uh, son and has aspirations for a life together. Okay, let's take a look. There is this girl that I met. I actually really like her. She's kind of simple but very curious. And she's very much like the girl in your movie. How old is she? She's 15, I think. Yeah, and she's getting married soon. She wants a burqa for the night of her wedding. She wants a burqa for a wedding night? I've never heard of that. I believe her. It's a tradition here. It's also a tradition to remind women at every opportunity that they're inferior to men. It's different. How is it different? How is it different? A burqa is a prison. You can't even breathe under it. Those were your exact words. That's what you said to me. But ever since I've come here, I've tried to have a little bit of an open mind, okay? What's the difference between a woman in the West who wants to wear a short skirt, fishnet stockings and garters to look sexy, and a girl in the village who likes to wear a burqa to look mysterious and desirable? I'm going to pay her, just like everyone else, as an equal, as a fellow artist, okay? I can't promise you anything else. And from Act of Dishonor, uh, a, a small scene a, it tells you a little bit about what it's really about. Because Act of Dishonor, the essence of it is It's about honor the killing. plot. Yes. It's the crime of honor. It's, about, it's a love story. It's a young girl and a young boy. We're in love. They want to get married. They're engaged. She is curious. She's, she wants to get out. She's confined to her home. And in that village, a woman doesn't leave her home uh, before she's married to, and moves to the next household. Uh, but she wants to get out and experience life. And a film crew arrives. Um, because she wants a burqa, the film crew offers to give her a burqa if she shows up on the film set. And that's as where the trouble or as just a, for fun for, or well there's reward. a lot of miscommunications because she wants to go out to get the burqa. The film crew feels that they can give a burqa to a woman because it is like a prison. So that sort of brought brings about that catalyst of the mm. problems, the set of problems. She leaves her house and then she's in trouble. And it's beyond the ability of the film crew to fix it or anybody else because she has crossed the line, she's crossed the boundary. And then it's left to her father and fiance to deal with her mm. and whether they can carry the act to get rid of her and how they can get rid of her. And when you say get rid of her, you mean kill to her? To kill her, yes. So it's her, would it be her father's obligation to kill her father first? 
uh, then potential husband next, or how does it work? Yes, the way it works is that usually, uh, because it is the name of the family, she still lives with her father. So the father is also the older member. He is under a lot of pressure, and I actually illustrate that in the film. Because mm -hmm. for me, when it comes to crimes of honor and violence against women, we know the victims are always women. Uh, in the context of crime of honor, there is a lot of pressure on men as well. And what I was careful about not to make um, the father looks as if like all Afghan men are just violent, horrible creatures. They're just mm -hmm. waiting to kill their daughters, which is not true. You know, he's a loving man. He, he cares for his daughter. And, but the community puts pressures on him that you are the man, you're the father, and they start talking about him and his lack of ability to deal with it. And they say, if he can't deal with it, we're going to have to do something. Mm. And therefore, he's forced to try to think about how he can, how he can uh, kill yes. his daughter. Yes, and what if he can't? He simply can't. He knows he's supposed to. He knows for the honor of the family or the archaic thought of the honor of the family. What if he can't? Well, if he can't, then obviously someone else has to, and it's the fiancé. So he basically, you know, lets the fiancé has to come in. The, the problem is that he can't tell the public or the, the community that he cannot carry the act. Otherwise, he would look like a weak man. So he has to internally suffer for something that he's charged with to do. Mm. And what if the fiancé can't? Well, then, you know, she would live. But the community, they will be completely, they would be judged by the community. They'll so have to. They would be outcasts? They'll be completely outcast. Completely you know? outcast. Yeah. And part of it too is why they want to do this. The punishing the girl sets an example for others. The fear of the community is that if she's gone unpunished, all their daughters mm -hmm. and, and wives are start doing things that they wouldn't like right. to do. Right, they misbehave. So exactly. So to, pr to make sure that they're not going to do that, they have to punish this person who has crossed the line, so it mm -hmm. teaches the rest a lesson that, ah, watch it. You know, you're a woman. You have your place, and that's where you belong. And are there women, uh, women's groups, who are fighting back? Are there men's groups who are fighting back, a more evolved? Not men's groups. There are women's organizations that are struggling and trying. There are some community-based. But considering the number of problems that exist in the society, um, this is almost at the bottom. You know, it's like domestic violence in our societies. Right. We are aware of it. We know it. We have laws to protect it. And we have organizations that fight it. But mm -hmm. it doesn't mean we have completely got rid of it. Sure. Um, so it, again, it is just another act of violence against women. And in a country like Afghanistan, where there's still poverty, lack of education, lack of awareness, a lot of people don't even think this is a wrong thing to do. Mm -hmm. You know, And sometimes, oddly enough, like most patriarchal societies, it's the women in the family that says, um, oh, it's your honor. It's mothers who usually tell their sons that this is your honor and you must preserve it. So it's not just coming down through the man in the family, but also from women in the community who are being raised to think as women, this is their position. They should just go along with what is carved mm -hmm. out for them. And if they speak out and if they break any rules, then it's their fault. Yeah, we need some seismic shifts in ideology. And I know you're working on that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank nice you. to it's see been you a great again. Pleasure. Thank you. Active Dishonor Van City Theater screening uh, tonight. Nellifer Pazira, our guest.